you all get your sunglasses. So there aren't a lot of jobs where a person can be a designer, a craftsman, a scientist, and a pyromaniac. But being a graduate student in ceramics at Utah State is just one of those jobs. And so in this talk, I want to give you a context of what it means to be a ceramics student here at Utah State. And this is my office, or studio, or mess, whatever you want to call it. And in my studio, I guess you need a desk, and this is what my desk looks like. And you can see there's a lot going on. Rocks, glazes, pots, pictures, samples, analysis. My research has a lot of facets. And in my studio, the line between art and science is usually blurred. And whether I'm doing science or making art, my job has been to follow my curiosity and to explore my interests. And I spend a lot of time outside digging and looking for parallels between how rocks and minerals are formed in nature and how new materials are formed in a ceramic kiln. And nowadays, ceramic studios are stocked full of materials that are mined for consistency and shipped all around the world. And there's a huge range of minerals and combinations of ceramic glazes. And so I spend a lot of time coming up with my own recipes. And now a ceramic glaze is nothing more than a glass-like coating fused to the surface of a ceramic object through fire. And this is really a great place to go out and to explore and to find new ingredients and new materials. And this is a rock quarry in the middle of Idaho. And I found some really interesting material here. And the basalt that I found here is just one flavor of volcanic rock. And this is Topaz Mountain in Utah. And my mineralogy class went here on a field trip. And before leaving, I filled up my Jeep with a bunch of rhyolite. And rhyolite is another flavor of volcanic rock. And just like a baker who has to mill wheat into flour, I use milling equipment in the ceramic studio to turn rocks into glaze ingredients. And when I milled these rocks and combined them together, I ended up with this really amazing ceramic glaze. And I'm not the first person to do this. The potters of Sung Dynasty China were doing this kind of thing more than a thousand years ago. And the glaze on this bowl is a process or the result of them firing the materials that they had. And I've taken this idea further by incorporating the fired ceramic objects with the rocks that they're actually made from. And I made this slab by cutting a basalt boulder in half and then diamond polishing the surface. And last week, I had my MFA thesis exhibition. And it was a culmination of all this research. And so in graduate school, scientists write papers, musicians do recitals, and artists have exhibitions. And I called my exhibition pyrosynthesis, which means the creation through fire. And from the beginning, I wanted my show to be a culmination of art and science. And like this talk, I really wanted to give people an idea of how one goes about picking up rocks and turning them into finished art. And in the center of the gallery were the pots themselves, because nobody cares if you have the most amazing ceramic glazes if you don't have anything to put them on. And along the walls, I had a bunch of SEM images of my glazes. And my art STEM fellowship has made it possible for me to work in the core microscopy facility here on campus and take super high magnification images of the actual glazes on the forms in my show. Now, I came to Utah State with a background in glaze chemistry and ceramic science, and I wanted to dig deep but I had no idea that I'd end up on the nanoscale. And with the technology here on campus, I've done just that. And just as I've explored the landscapes of Utah, I've begun to explore the landscapes of my ceramic glazes. And we're going to move from a two millimeter sliver of glaze down to the nanoscale. So this is 100 magnification, and 200, and 400, and 800, 1,600, 3,200, 
And at 6,400, we're at the micron level. 12,000 and 25,000, you can begin to see the nanoparticles. And just like I ran out of time taking higher magnification images of my glazes, I'm out of time with this talk. So if you want to see more of my work, you can read about my process on my website and my blog. And soon, you'll be able to see a video tour of my MFA thesis exhibition. Thank you. <laughs>